In the occupied West Bank, Israeli forces are carrying out more raids. They stormed parts of Jenin, Nablus and Hebron on Sunday morning. Several Palestinian houses were destroyed. Israel has stepped up overnight raids on the territory since October the 7th. Meanwhile, Israeli forces have killed three Palestinians in the town of Abu Dis in the occupied West Bank. They stormed the house of a resident they say was a suspected fighter. Mohammed Jamjoum is joining us now live from Ramallah. Just bring us the latest on these overnight raids, Mohammed. So, Rob, as you mentioned, uh, it's very much come to be expected that there are multiple raids uh, increased in intensification of these raids across the occupied West Bank in the overnight hours. And that's what we witnessed uh, this past overnight into the morning as well. Let me tell you about the most intense of those raids, which you just mentioned a moment ago. That happened in the town of Abu Dis, which is close to occupied East Jerusalem. The Israeli military entered Abu Dis around 2.15 a.m. local time. They first clashed with Palestinians in the area. They then surrounded the house of Nabil Halabiya, who the Israeli military had said was suspected of being a fighter. Now, what the Israeli military did thereafter, it's what's being called a pressure cooker technique that's used in the occupied West Bank. Essentially, first, they called for Nabil Harabiya to hand himself over. There was a standoff that lasted several hours. Nabil Harabiya did not surrender. There were different weapons that were used. There was increased intensity in the usage of those weapons. Um, at one point, uh, observers say that the Israeli army fired an anti-tank missile towards the house. They then bulldozed the house of, of Harabiya, uh, and he was killed in that house. There were also, as you mentioned, two other Palestinians killed when confrontations happened in the area between Palestinians and the Israeli army. Now, beyond that, there were also raids that happened in Tulkaram and Nablus. Um, there was also one in a small village called Nuba, which is northwest of, northwest of Hebron. But another intense uh, raid happened in Jenin, which has really become a flashpoint uh, when it comes to all of these raids. That happened in the overnight hours. The Israeli military not only entered the city, they also entered the refugee refugee camp in Janine, and we're told that armored vehicles and armored bulldozers were used to tear up infrastructure and roads in that area. Rob? Uh, Mohammed, I understand also, of course, that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who's been doing this diplomatic tour of the region, is going to be traveling to Ramallah to meet the Palestinian president. That's right, Rob. We're told that uh, Secretary Blinken is scheduled to start that meeting in the next hour with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Now, it's a big question as to what exactly can be achieved with this meeting. Secretary Blinken's... Um, trip to the region has really not yielded any diplomatic results thus far. Uh, you saw his meetings with Arab foreign ministers yesterday that was featured in Allen's report just a few moments ago. Really didn't end with any kind of concrete solutions to the conflict in Gaza. Now, obviously, what's going on in Gaza is going to be on the top of the agenda when it comes to what Blinken discusses with Abbas. Um, what's going to be interesting is to see whether or not the Americans float the idea that they have floated publicly in the past few days of perhaps the Palestinian Authority uh, taking over governance of Gaza and ultimately having the responsibility, the security responsibility for Gaza. That's something that Blinken mentioned publicly for the first time uh, in the U.S. Congress just a few days ago. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he broaches that subject with Abbas because thus far the Palestinian Authority has said no to that proposal. What they've said is the Palestinian Prime Minister has said that that cannot happen without any kind of comprehensive agreement that would include the West Bank being included in a Palestinian state. They want to see solutions for the occupied West Bank. And when it comes to the occupied West Bank, there is increased worry, not just by the U.S., but also by the U.N., because of the increase in violence in the occupied West Bank, the increase in the intensity of the raids by the Israeli army, uh, and the demolitions of Palestinian homes. There's so much concern about that right now. We must remember that uh, 2023 has been the deadliest year thus far for Palestinians across the occupied West Bank. More than 150 Palestinians killed thus far. Uh, and, and to that end, uh, people are very worried that the situation in the occupied West Bank is only going to get worse. Rob? Mohammed, thank you very much. Mohammed Jamjum bringing us up to date from Ramallah.